Shalom. I want to start our foremost by giving all praise to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahshua, Bashim, Rakadesh. Salutation to the elders and apostles of GMS groups and ones alike, teach 100% truth. Shalom, Barak, thumb to them. And double honors to the elders and apostles of GMS groups and ones alike for the edification and knowledge for the years. And give all praise again to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahshua, Bashim, Rakadesh. Tonight's lesson is going to be various lessons and different verses. And uh, that the spirit is going to lead me to break down. Try to, uh, to break down. I'm going to start out with Second Ezra, um, 16, 18 to 21. Um, the beginnings of sorrows the, and great mourning, the beginnings of famine and great death, the beginnings of wars, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginnings of evils. What shall I do when these evils come? This relates to the beginning, relating to sorrows, mourning, death, great death, wars. The things that's happening now. This relates to the state and condition of what society is going through currently right now. 19. Behold, the famine and plagues, tribulation, and anguish are sent as scourges for the amendment. Scourges relates to a tool used for ultimately for punishment, executing judgment. Number 20. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Relating all these things that's coming, happened to pass, coming to pass, uh, relating to the current state and condition, many are not going to repent and not, or change or convert. They work their salvation with fear and tremor. Now the scourges, example of that scourges right now is this coronavirus. That's a scourge. This is a tool ultimately implemented, ultimately by Yahweh Bashem Yahshua, ultimately by using Esau to implement the scourge, this virus, which has been pretty much... Uh, Plague it worldwide. So this is a plague. This is a pestilence. This is a, a tool implement for punishment. For 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in a good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, the sword, the famine, and great confusion. That victual relates to supplies, food. You know, they'll think we're somewhat going back into a, a somewhat pre-normal state of condition. But actually, we're, uh, we're not. And they're going to believe, to believe, since they believe to believe in that, they're going to underestimate what's really, what's really to come and what's really happening. Whether covertly, behind the scenes, or overtly, which is obvious in plain sight. So they're going to take it for granted and not take it seriously. And because of that, certain things are going to come upon aware on them. First of Thessalonians 5, 2, 5, uh, 5 and 3. You know, it's going to come aware because pretty much they're not paying attention and not taking it seriously. They're harking the heat in these things. All right, the next. I'm going to switch it up. This is um, Hebrews 9, 27 and 28. Now that relates to the, those verses I read last that was um, related to the horrors of the last days. We're in the last days, and these are examples of uh, things that's going to happen. Hebrews 9, 27 and 9, 28. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Hamashiach was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin and salvation. This relates to the ultimate, uh, 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 this relates to the greatness of Hamashiach's sacrifice. This relates to him dying and being crucified for the remission of our sins. You know what I mean? So, that relates to him, die, uh, him uh, ultimately being the sacrificial lamb to so we can be, have a chance to be regrafted, readopted back into Yahweh Bashim Yahshua ultimately. To do that, well, he had to be crucified to die for our sins. One through five talks about the earthly sanctuary. Six through ten talks about limitation of earthly service. Eleven through fifteen talks about the heavenly sanctuary. Sixteen to twenty-two, the mediator's death was necessary. Was necessary so we could be regrafted, regrafted, and um, readopted back uh, to Yahweh Hashem ultimately. Pretty much that spiritual marriage. We connect to that spiritual marriage again. Uh, being crucified for many in remission of our sins. And 23 to 28 talks about the great greatness of Mashiach's sacrifice. Because he sacrificed 
for us. So we have a chance to be regrafted. We don't deserve of that death. That death should have been us. That death should have been us. You know what I mean? And um, so he died for us because ultimately the Father loved us so much that he was the only begotten Son to die for us. We're not worthy. Continue on. All right, switch it up again. Ecclesiasticus three and eight. Everything has its time and season. One through eight. Yahweh was given tasks sixteen to twenty-two. The judgment in future belongs to Yahweh. The judgment relating to what's going to happen, relating to um, society and world, and ultimately the future relating to that. Everything that's going to belong to Yahweh by Shem Yashah ultimately. Now, Ecclesiastes 3, um, I'll just do a quick verse, uh, everything, um, uh, everything has this, um, let me say, 3 through 8, a time to love, a time, a time for peace, a time to uh, a war, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time to peace, paraphrase, that's 3 and 8 of Ecclesiastes, everything has its time and place. Now, Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. 3, 8, and 11 this talks about um, honor thy number 8 honor thy father and mother both in word and deed that a blessing may come upon thee from them for the blessing of the fathers establish the houses of the children but the curse of the mother rooted out foundations glory not in the dishonor of thy father for thy father's dishonor is no glory unto thee for the glory of men of a man is from the honor of his father and a mother in dishonor is a reproach to children this relates to the duties relating to your parents man honor of thy mother and thy father man regardless what kind of past or history or complexity you have regarding a relationship with them it's according to scripture honor thy mother and thy father you know what I mean so that's very important and in the eyes of Yahweh Hashem is, is, is the utmost very important alright Marie Nahum 3, 4, and 6 Because of the multitudes of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot the mistress of, of witchcraft mistress is equal to a female boss one who has authority and power and um, power and authority you know what I mean so um, mistress is a female boss you know a matter of speaking That sell of nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft. It relates to sorcery, witchcraft, etc. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon the face, thy face, and I will shew the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon them and make thee a vile, and it will set thee as a gazing stock, which is a spectacle, something to look at and mock. This relates to the, uh, the judgment and woe to um, Nineveh. Nineveh is a city, it's an ancient city of the Syrian city of Upper Mesopotamia, located on the outskirts of Mosul, which is modern day northern Iraq. It is uh, located on the eastern bank of the Tigris River, and it was, it was the capital of the Neo Assyrian Empire, relating to the northern tribe when they were under the Syrian captivity. Switch it up. I'm going to read um, a little windy. <laughs> Matthew 10, 16 to 20. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be, be therefore wise as serpent, harmless as doves. But beware of men for they will deliver you up to councils and they will scourge you in, in their synagogues and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my for, for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles 19 
but when they deliver you up, take no thought or take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not that ye that ye for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. That relates to what to say relating to your testimony when you're interrogated under persecution, trials, and tribulations for the things that you're going to speak are not going to be of you. It's going to be what's, what's put in your spirit to speak. And this relates to um, the persecutions are coming relating to the prophets and the and ones who are defending and standing for the faith and being persecuted for their faith. Put that with um, Revelations 2, 10, and 11. Revelations 3, 9, and 11. John 15, 18 to 25. The world's hatred. Because the world's hatred upon, you know, relating to this truth. Uh, the persecuted church, the faithful church, due to faith, because of their faith, they're going to be persecuted. Before, you know, they, before, the, first on uh, John 15 and 18, you know, before they hated you, they hated me. So all these things that they did to Yahweh, they're going to do to to the prophets and ones who are related to the defendant of this faith. Related to the defendant of faith, related to the truth, the defendant of this truth, which is the gospel. So, uh, continue on. I'm going to read um, 2 Timothy's um, 2.23 But foolish and unlearned questions avoid knowing that they do gender strife and the servant of the Lord must not strife but be gentle and to all men apt to teach patience Basically, conduct yourself in a conduct yourself in, a, in an appropriate, appropriate spiritual, um, spiritual man. Conduct yourself related to prophesizing and teaching, um, and meekness, instructing those oppo that oppose themselves. If you a pure virtue, will give them repentance to acknowledge and of the truth. This relates to the proved and disapproved worker. I'm gonna put um, also Second um, Timothy's. Uh, and 15 study to show thyself approved a workman that needeth not to be ashamed and rightly divided in the word of truth that relates to this gospel man and basically being a, a spiritual pretty much a spiritual workhorse to um, build up your knowledge spiritual knowledge related to this truth and uh, faith and everything you know what I mean uh, so you can prophesize and preach this word man That relates to the approved and disapproved workers relating to spiritual workers relating to a faith and this truth. So the worker needed not to be ashamed. So don't be ashamed of standing out here and prophesizing this word, man. If it's in your spirit, you prophesize it. Divide, divide it rightly the word of truth. Interpretation, separation relating to um Defining certain uh, dark sayings related to the scriptures, and um, and and, be, and began to teach it among the uh, the congregation, which is the um, the nations of people. So begin to be that um, that worker, that spiritual worker, pretty much. All right, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna do um, James one twenty two and one twenty five. But ye, but be ye doer of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. 23 if any for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass for he behold himself and going go, goeth his way straightway forgetting what manner of man he was but whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continued and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. So it's all, all about application, man. And that work and that and um, the works is part of that the application. You remember you 
individually, you're trying to convert, change, repent, and work your salvation with fear and trembling. No one could do that for you. You had to do that for yourself. That's an individual thing. Because ultimately, it's going to be an individual thing. When it comes down to it. So, it's beginning to um, be that doer. It's just not a hearer only. Because here, here is easy. But that doing part, that may be a little bit more difficult. But nevertheless, it's part of the process related to the balance of this, what has to be done related to the truth. So doers, not hearers only. All right. Now I'm going to put that also with 226. For the body, uh, for the spirit is, uh, for the body without the spirit is dead. The spirit without the body is dead. So is faith without his works. That's two twenty six of James. Paraphrasing. So it's about it's about pretty much um, the works. You know, what I mean, the works. That's the real important thing. And for that, you might re you receive a prophet's reward in the process. Because what's very important, you must individually begin to convert, change, repent, work your salvation with fear and trembling. You have to want to do this. You have to want to repent, change, and work your salvation. That's an individual thing. I can't stress that enough. You got to want to do that for yourself. No one can make you do it. Old adage, I can lead you to the water, but I can't make you drink it. I can give you, I can give you directions how to get there. But I can't make you go and actually go and and um, go to your to the destination that 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 you're going. You know, the tools are you have to you have to um, you have to want to apply it yourself. There has to be a desire to do it. And no one can make you do it because ultimately it's going to be your decision anyway. One thing I learned, I did, you can't tell grown folks what to do, but so much. They're going to do what they want to do. But the prophets are giving you the tools, what needs to be, what you need to do relating to spiritual matters. It's up to you what you want. It's up to you whether you it's, it's up to you whether what you're going to do to what you're going to do as far as um, you know whether you want to carry it out and do certain things or not. The rest is up to you, pretty much saying. With that being said, this is just a few verses relating to that. And um, we'll begin to be, begin to end this. Um, oh the words today I wanted to do two words. Ast astriepe Astrepe with Greek means lightning. Um, astrepe which means um, lightning glare, bright shining, and um, bar um, Barak, Barak, which is a, a lightning or, an or analogy of a gleam concentrating a flash sword, bright gleaming sword light. That was in um, um, Greek and Hebrew. That all said, um, I'm going to begin to end this and give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yosha, Bashim Rock and Dish. Salutation to the elders and apostles, GMS crews and ones alike. Teach 100% true. Shalom and Baraka to them. I'll give all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yosha, Bashim Rock and Dish. The water Shalom, thanks.